The project that we're working on is a, a National Science Foundation EBSCOR project. Uh, it involves a collaboration between the University of Kentucky and Louisiana State University. We are working on lignin and uh, what we are trying to do is to develop a, a quantification method of analyzing the lignin. So the students are the lifeblood of any research project. These guys are actually driving the research mission forward. I'm merely a coach. I'm on the sideline rooting for them and trying to tell them which play to run. This is just an overview of what we've been doing. We built about nine noble compounds, diamonds, and we've also built about three noble trimers. And these are the compounds we've been working on to develop our analytical method. I was working on quantifying the polarity of these lignin dimers that we make here in the lab. So at first I was using octanol and water to do a classic, it's called a log KOW um, separation, and then we actually moved on to do some work with an HPLC method, which was sort of, like I said, a little bit innovative. It had recently been published, and that's how I was able to quantify the log KOWs. We're building the very first examples of the molecules that a plant would actually build when it makes the lignin polymer. And by doing that, it allows us to now use the advanced mass spectrometry we have available to develop new methodology to analyze for these compounds with the hope that by going from the bottom up, we can develop the rules and the understanding to be able to interpret the results we're getting from the top-down approach. Yeah, so that was the GC mass spec, and uh, you can inject a mixture of samples. It separates all of the analytes that you have in your sample, and in the end, it reaches the mass spec detector, so it can detect whatever uh, sample com that comes out. The benefit in a project like this is the fact that we're training graduate students. They may actually leave the university and never work on a lignin project again. So my task as a mentor is to prepare them to do science, period. And so I am trying to equip them with the skills necessary to address really complex problems, break it down into uh, a, a small tasks that can be uh, actually solved. And so hopefully they're all learning this skill set. So what I really wanted to do is to master the, the art of mass spectrometry and coming to UK has helped me a lot because I've had a lot of experience in use different mass spectrometry instruments, have experience working on them, so UK has really helped me a lot to, to master the mass spectrometry. It was really exciting to be part of something where I was discovering something new for the first time. I was working on um, quantifying the polarity of some of the compounds that we make here, and when I did it, there were values that had never been published before that no one knew at all, so that was really exciting to really um, be part of something innovative. And so by having the ag tie-in with this project, we can actually see how, uh, if we were to say grow switchgrass as a major crop to support this lignin research, how many acres of switchgrass could we grow in Kentucky? What would be the impact of growing that acreage on food production in the state? And so by having ag intimately involved in the project, all of these questions and variables get built into any solution that we attempt to come up with. Always when you collaborate with uh, different uh, major, different departments, it's always beneficial because you cannot see some aspects of uh, your project because you're just looking at it from the chemistry point of view and then you will collaborate with someone else from an engineering or agriculture group and they will see something different and we can share ideas and that's so beneficial. I think. In addition, you get an unbelievable resource of other experiences to apply to the problem. So collaboration is truly a remarkable thing in, in science today.